local NAACP president, your silence was and still is violent. Well, as of right now, we're not doing anything. We're laying low. Nobody can say that you can't do anything you want to do in life. Eight News reporter Sierra Fox was in Tappahannock and joins us live with the details. What do we want? Justice! What do you want it? Yeah! Tonight, protesters chanting for justice in the streets of Tappahannock. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! We want equality. We want to be treated fairly. My skin color isn't a weapon. Like, I won't hurt you. No justice! No, no peace! peace. No, no peace! peace. Demonstrators kneeling for eight minutes, 46 seconds. The amount of time ex-police officer Derek Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. I was reading my Bible the other day and in Genesis 15 and 13 it reads, Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for 400 years your descendants will be strangers in a country not of their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated there. Well, I've always wanted to be a part of this. But I feel like I was too young. You know, I feel like, how do I put it? It's like when you're young, you don't feel like you have as much authority as grown, grown adults. But recently, I think the George Floyd, the whole thing that happened with him, I think that was a straw that broke the camel's back. And then I guess Bree saw how passionate I was on social media with it all, like telling people to donate here, sign petitions here. And she was like, hey, let's do something. And then that's where it started. Uh, Deanna and I both facilitate youth resilience programs for um, young people in the community to try to help them find their voice. So we got involved because some of the youth that went through our program, who we built that relationship with, reached out to us and said, hey, we want to do something. And we're like, hell yeah, anything you want, like, we'll, we'll get behind you. So can you tell us a little bit about Tappahannock, the history of race relations in your opinion? History race relations here in Tappahannock, Virginia. Uh, it's the it's, it's same across the world, really, in America. It's one of those places where I make it really simple. I work in a segregated business. White people very seldom come to my business unless they're poor. Well, when I came back to uh, Essex County, I was a certified reading specialist for the master's in particular reading. A job opportunity came up. And when you'd be, uh, it's ironic that I was on the playground one day, a retired teacher, Caucasian, came to me and said, Griselda, you're the only one who's certified to take that position. And I said to her, and I knew the climate, I said, Ms. Motley, I will probably not receive that position. And it was true. I did not receive that position. And the principal, to make his point, came back to a faculty meeting and said he changed the position with the um, consent of the superintendent to a regular teacher position so he could hire anyone he wanted to hire. I feel like people think since this area is so small that it doesn't happen here, but in actuality it does. Like, they just sweep it under the rug and it's not acknowledged and needs to be acknowledged. Well, NAACP came in here, walked with me, and said she had nothing. We're not with NAACP. Like, I'm not with NAACP. Yeah. Anything like that. Like, okay. I'm sorry, I'm not with no NAACP, no Black Lives Matter, nothing like that. I'm not that person. I was just telling her, I like that stuff. It's like American pictures. And it's like yeah. Show okay. Stuff. Well, then why explain why are they up here like this video and this? I mean, well, we've been everything we've been, in the we've store. Been, we're just riding around. His purpose is right. not necessarily my purpose. If he likes yeah, something else. Yeah, we're just riding. We're just Come just on, going. guys. We've just been going yes, from man. different Come places. on. Talk to me. Okay. Out of that way, these guys find issue with this. 
We didn't say. The NAACP president walked the store with me. She said, I said, if you want this vendor to take this in here, we will do so. She said to me herself, there's nothing wrong with that. It's memorabilia. I collect it myself. Okay. Now, if y'all find an issue with it, we will take it down. Because if I'm mad at me, it's not my well, I am a black American in Essex County. I am on the town council here. I've been on town council since 2007. Uh, how many people are on the town it's council? It's six people on the town council. And out of the six, how many of them are? Um... Two. Okay. I was the first black woman to be appointed and elected to the town council. Wow. Yes. Wow. So we were down at Acme. Mm -hmm. um, and the owner, like, I guess Reggie bought this thing. This? They have a lot of that. Okay. This is a part of our history. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. like the, um, what is it, the Mammoths. They had those out there at the beginning when they first opened up. And people were livid because they were out there. So I went down there as the president of the NAACP here. And I said, look, I said, I've got a lot of flack from all of this. What can you do to make me understand why you're selling this type of stuff? He said, it's not a thing. He said, they, you know, People enjoy getting these kind of things and he, he said you'd be surprised that a lot of black folk come and buy this stuff in the school system never really teach the raw things about racism. They talk, they are pressed on the Holocaust. And I feel like that's because it was a mass execution of white people. Can you look at that? Oh yeah. Acne. Yeah. It, and um, it's interesting to hear the owner's response to that there's a market for this. So Absolutely. Absolutely. But well the lawn jockeys, y'all seen lawn jockeys before? All right, those lawn jockeys, you know the history mm -hmm. of the lawn jockey, the real history of it. You know, this is this is racist memorabilia and it's everywhere. And I think so what what's what the consensus was with Tapper Hannick is that okay, no one has said anything about the statues because they felt that oh, it's a moot point. This is right. It would be no need that no one would take it down. Mm -hmm. But now we have momentum to potentially have it looked at because right. if you know Robert E. Lee who was the general of the Confederate Army, mm -hmm. if they took down his statue, then there are a lot of people who believe that any statue could be taken down. Gotta go through channels, right? Most definitely. We have to go, go through, through channels. channels. We have to go through channels. But right. the first thing you it starts with the conversation. So okay. you know, raising that momentum, you know, raising that awareness about the actual statue getting the consensus of the people and to be honest the people who are out here complaining about the statue they're not the people that's in there voting they're not the people who are in there you know speaking their piece so that's where the issue comes in too so what we want to do raise awareness to the point where this is just the beginning so do you think like legislatively the Essex County is ready to kind of what people consider like reconcile certain things you were just talking about the monument. That, that's a part of your history. Mm -hmm. you know yeah, that's a part of my history. I was telling Reggie, I said, you know, either way, it doesn't matter to me because I look at that statue, I see it and I don't see it. But it does have significance in my life because my great-great-grandfather was a captain in the Confederate Army. And, and he, you know, he served. But for, his, for other people, I feel their pain because it is the Confederacy, but that's part of my history. Statues are great, you know, if you have them, whatever. These folks have erected statues to perpetuate systematic white supremacy. I mean, if, if we're gonna take down a statue, then uh, the church is gonna take down the white Jesus. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Those are symbolic things, which is fine. I don't care about a damn statue. I wanna know about statutes. I wanna know about policy. I want to know, are we going to put people in a political position to where we're actually doing business, to where we get things? Not minority, not people of color, none of these ambiguous terms, black people. They said that the militia was going to be out here to stop us from protesting. Yeah. Where they at? Yeah. Where they at? Yeah. Where they at? Yeah. I'm home. So 
Y'all don't feel me because I'm home. I'm home. For so long. Everybody knows I'm home. 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 So if you don't stand for us, we don't stand with you. So what we gonna do? Say it down. What we gonna do? Say it down. What we gonna do? Say it down. Tear 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 it down. It will come down. So please, folks. I will strongly urge as many of you to attend our Board of Supervisors meeting on July the 14th at 7 o'clock and please support the injustice removal in Essex County. This is a start. This is not the answer, but this is a start. This is a start. So I need your support. I need your support, folks. Thank you. I need your support. Watching the protests in Richmond, the rallies, the marches, um, you know, on social media and on the news, but not really feeling connected. And so this opportunity came up to participate in this rally that's right here at home. Um, I felt like it was something I had to do. Like, it, was, it was important to me as a black woman. First march that I ever remember is happening. So it looks like it's going to be big and beautiful. Thank you all. So we're going to get started. I'm passionate about my culture. I want to continue to educate myself on my culture generation after generation. Regardless of what, I'm proud to be black. I did this because I'm tired of seeing my people being murdered, mistreated, and labeled. I am tired of fearing with my family members and friends make it home at night. I am tired of our skin color being used as a weapon against us. I'm tired of the system that was created to protect us from being used to break us. They're trying to lock us away in jails and prisons. Black people are incarcerated at more than five times the rate of other races. However, it goes beyond police brutality. Racism is everywhere. I think one of the questions um, that I was sent earlier had to do with um, policing in the county. And my father has been in law enforcement all of my life. And so I have a deep respect for law enforcement officers. And um, just given what's happened around the country, what's happened in Richmond, um, I feel like it comes from leadership. We are satisfied with putting black people in positions of political power with no power. It's just a position. And if you have a position, I'll say it, if you have a position and you do nothing because you want to, you don't want to jeopardize your position, that's where we fell in the civil rights movement. That's where we fell. We got <clears throat> niggas wanting to hold positions that do nothing or give symbolic gestures that do damn nothing. We're here now because of that, because I don't know what the civil is. Your name civil? You classified as civil? You classified as minority? Although racism has an impact on many ethnic groups, racism is justified against black people in the 100 year Jim Crow system, which contains their inferiority to whites. <laughs> The people that were strong and mighty in the NAACP in the 50s or the 60s or 70s have gone on wherever they're going. I mean, they're no longer alive. So the shift and the focus now, the ones that are left have to understand that we need to pass what we learned. We got to pass the baton. Younger people can't do it alone. Older people can't do it, aren't able to do it. So we have to have a mix. You all need our experience, our expertise, but we need for you all to carry the battle. I can't march today because I can't march. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. First of all, on behalf of Chief Ashworth and myself, we'd like to say thank you guys. You can do it, and you can do it in a peaceful way. That's right. That's right. And it takes unity. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. Nobody, nobody can say that you can't do anything you want to do in life. I had a man, and this was a black man, that told me 32 years ago that I would never be 
a good law enforcement officer. Look at you now. And I'm at the top of the line. <laughs> so, do things, the only thing I'm going to say is do things professionally. Nothing has changed. So even though the dates have changed, the names of the young men and young women, or old men and old women, have not changed. Nothing has changed, I guarantee you. Princess Blanding and her family hope the world is listening. Blanding lost her brother Marcus David Peters two years ago when he was fatally shot by a Richmond police officer who's black. The family says Peters, who was unclothed, was experiencing a mental crisis when he aggressively charged a police officer who shot him. A shooting later deemed justifiable by the city's prosecutor. Findings the family still disagrees with today. Recent events surrounding the death of George Floyd by a white officer in Minneapolis that sparked nationwide protests and rioting have Blanding's full attention. I am a former teacher um, here in Essex County for five years and I served as an assistant principal for six years here in Essex County. Of course, as I said, he's my brother. Um, he's one of 12 siblings and um, he was a VCU graduate with a, uh, excuse me, with, uh, he earned his bachelor's degree in biology with minors in psychology, chemistry, and in Spanish. Marcus was fluent in Spanish. Marcus is a young black man who loved the community, and even as a first year biology teacher, his heart was for his students. How do you think his tragedy affected this community? Okay. Um, well, he worked in the school and like with at, at Essex High School, the, 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 the ratio of black teachers is like slim to none. So like he was a he was somebody that came in there, graduated from BCU, you know, came in there as a young guy, had a good mindset, positive mindset, came in with the kids and the kids resonated with him. Um, and then, you know, to have these kids be at home and come from school one day and just thinking they're going to go back and see their teacher. And they hear about people in the news and stuff saying that he deserved to get killed and, you know, just, you know, not being able to have a full, like, grieving process because a lot of stuff happened in Richmond and a lot of places like Gloucester and Saluda. So these kids really didn't have a time to just be able to, you know, get through his death. And that our school systems uplift and promote our black leaders starting from within. Yeah. We can no longer allow the only solution for dealing with our black children who do not conform to the rules and cultures of a system that was never created to serve and protect us to continue to make the only available solution for our children is to put them in special education or alternative incarceration. I knew Mr. Peters because one of our teachers, something happened to him, um, to her. We don't know what happened. She got fired, but then Mr. Peters came and instantly like had a connection with him like I remember I remember the first day he was there everybody was all happy and we had another black teacher another black teacher we didn't really see that a lot well we saw some but we didn't really see it a lot um that was my favorite teacher anybody can tell you people might get offended but that, I was your favorite student and nobody's gonna tell how me how did you feel when, when you heard what happened to Marcus um, I actually was asleep and I woke up and uh, a lot of people were saying like uh, your teacher died, your teacher is like laying on the street as we speak. I didn't believe it. Of course I didn't believe it, but um, I just searched up and I saw stuff and I didn't see anything, but I didn't see a face. And when I looked on there, it was um, it was him. It was him, and I was um, I was shocked. Like I I didn't see the face. I was like, it could be a lot of it's a lot of black people in Richmond and. I don't. I don't think that's him. I still was in the dial. Mm -hmm. So they um they they called me and they was like it's confirmed and his name came out. So I still didn't believe it. And I looked it up and that was the first time I knew his name was Marcus. I just knew him by Mr. Peters. They had grief counselors and I was just I was out of class for a week and school was just it wasn't the same. My teacher mattered and he needs justice. This is ridiculous. We're tired. We're tired. I don't feel like his death has been recognized enough. I feel as though it's because of his skin color. I feel like when it happened, it could have happened a different way. He didn't have to die in that situation. Someone could have talked to him. They didn't have to shoot to kill. 
they could have just went about it a different way. They have been working tirelessly with amazing, fearless organizers in Richmond over the past two years to demand that measures be taken to ensure that having a mental health crisis is no longer a death sentence and to fight for the creation of a civilian review board with subpoena power to ensure that this racist system that continues to harass, threaten, demonize, dehumanize, profile, and murder our black bodies is held accountable by the people as we do not trust the police to police themselves. And I feel like when it first happened, everybody was shocked. But I feel like the school and the police were trying to push it basically just the important people and time and didn't really get people enough time to breathe or really learn about what happened. It was like, oh, this happened, we're sorry. But now we have to just go on. We talked to um, some leadership from NAACP and when I asked about Marcus, they declined to the comment. Um, do you think leadership or this area has spoken up enough or yeah, what are your thoughts on that? I'm glad you asked that question. Leadership, uh, not just in Essex, uh, but I'm going to come back to Essex, but leadership in general has been silent, and their silence is contributing to violence. Um, here, when I look at Essex and Essex NAACP, along with Richmond's NAACP, there has been a lack of leadership. Um, you cannot say that all lives matter and not acknowledge that Marcus David Peters' life matter and that his life was unjustly taken. And unfortunately, when I look at Marcus's case, we had a black officer kill him, there was a black police chief, there was a black mayor, there was a black commonwealth attorney. Okay, and we have Benjamin Crump, who was Trayvon Martin's lawyer, who was a black attorney. But because they were all black and Democrat, it wasn't the right thing to stand up, you know, and to speak out. So when I look at the local NAACP, I believe that some personal feelings towards me probably jumped in. But you've got to get to the point where we say that we're not going to allow our black bodies to continue to be demonized. The message that you're sending is that you can have a mental health crisis, be unarmed, be completely untrust, but still our only resolution is to kill you. And that can't be okay in any of our eyes or any of our hearts. What role do you think NAACP at this moment moving forward will play in this community? Well, as of right now, we're not doing anything. We're laying low mm -hmm. because we have to go through so much to get a permit to do the, the protesting and all of that. But we stand with the national and we stand with our community that black lives do matter. How do you feel about your son organi help organizing this thing? I'm truly blessed. I mean, to have him to participate in this mm -hmm. is overwhelming. I feel you look like you was ready to cry. I was, I was. And I'm just so proud to see all three of my kids out here because I mean, that could have been one of my two boys, you know, and I thank God that everything that they did today, I hope it made a change. Uh, 2020 civil rights movement. Uh, shout out to everybody that's racist that getting exposed, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you. It's a beautiful time. No, no, no. Shout out to all the black people who feel liberated and you feel like you could be your whole black self. Uh, I'm 100% with you and we about to give you some of this black love, even with my white counterpart in the, in the band. We're gonna give you some black love right now. Here we go. Let's get it. Hey, look, I hope you catch a wave. All right, right now I'm here with Reggie Carter. And first, I'd like to congratulate you on the success of the protests and tap and everything that's going on there. So can you tell me a little bit about what was your motivation? How did you get involved in this event? Uh, first, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Uh, it was definitely a collaborative effort. Um, so definitely couldn't have done it without the other organizers back home, without, you know, my friends who assisted with this initiative. Um, <clears throat> when we first started, uh, we knew it was going to be a protest going on because um, we assisted with, or well, I assisted with organizing that with some, some uh, other natives from Tappahannock. And when I started the project, it was just a bunch of friends coming together where we just wanted to document the events that transpired uh, or that were going to transpire. Um, now, I did not or could not have imagined that, you know, us sitting, you know, brainstorming what we wanted to accomplish when we got to Tappahannock on the 10th would turn into what it is today with it being, you know, over 300 people showing up to participate on the protest on June 10th, uh, doing podcast um, as a result, uh, having momentum with having the Confederate monument removed, having momentum with having an Essex Intermediate School uh, name change. So I myself, I could have never have imagined that it would have turned into that. 
um, or to this as big as it is now today. So um, I'm definitely grateful for the success that we've had so far.